Sounds good. Well, hey, a bunch of boys were hanging out. They uh, found a stray dog, and they were um, talking to one another pretty animatedly. And, and this pastor came on them and said, hey, uh, what are you boys doing here? And the boy said, oh, we're, we're lying. The, the, the guy who tells the biggest lie gets to, gets to keep the dog. And the pastor was a little taken back, and he said, well, young men, when I was a child your age, I would have never have thought of lying. To which the boy said, okay, you win the dog. You know, and uh, it's, it's kind of actually sad that we would actually, you know, laugh at the fact that someone was lying, right? But the truth is, uh, we've all been lied to before, right? And we've all told lies before. That's just the reality. It's the truth. And uh, so um, James here in the Bible is talking about, uh, well, what about this lie thing? Uh, is it important? Is it not important? What should we do about it? What does the Bible say about telling the truth? And uh, what does it say is uh, really the uh, intention? Why, why do we lie in the first place? And what's the, what's the result of lying? Is there a consequence attached? And uh, if there is, how can we keep from lying when we know we should, right? So we're going to look at those things today. Well, the first thing that we see here in the book of James, if you've got your Bible or if you've got your app on your phone, uh, it, says, it says, above all brothers, and you can stick sisters in there too, do not swear. Do not swear. Uh, and it goes on and says, don't swear by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All right? Now, this is not a passage on cussing. Okay? So that's a whole other issue. We can talk about that some other time. But it's not about cussing. That's not that kind of swearing. The kind of swearing that we're talking about today is the idea of trying to reinforce the truth. When we tell somebody and we say, you know what, this is really, really, really the truth, okay? I'm not lying to you. And so we find ways to try and say, um, I really am telling the truth. Like there's one that was very popular years ago, and it probably still is. But uh, have you ever heard anybody say, now, to be honest with you, anybody heard that phrase? Right? I was buying a car one time, and the, and the guy just kept saying that. Well, now, to be honest with you, this car, blah, blah, blah. And I finally had to stop him because I you know, was just getting so, so annoyed. I said, now, every sentence that comes out of your mouth, you're saying, to be honest with you. So are you just a pathological liar and are having to reinforce the fact that you're not lying right now? Because doesn't that phrase imply that you normally lie? And now this thing that I'm going to say right now is the truth. But normally I lie. Think about it, right? We use another one. Um, this is an old one. Uh, just kidding, right? Just kidding. We like to say, oh, oh, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. And it's a way to kind of have fun with somebody. At the same time, you're kind of digging them a little bit, right? So that's another way we do it. Now, there's a, another thing that we say. Cross my heart and what? Hope to die. Cross my heart and hope. Now, finish it. Cross my heart and hope to die. Stick a needle in. Who thought of that? That's just awful, right? So, you know, that's another one. We say, oh, yeah, we're going to reinforce the truth with this. I'm going to, you know, cross my heart, right? It's the first one I learned when I was a little kid. And then here's the one for older people, you know. Uh, I swear on my mother's grave. How come we never swear on our father's grave? You know, was he a liar or what? You know, only mom tells the truth. So we swear on our mother's grave, okay? Um, here's one that guys love to use because it's kind of a power thing, okay? You know, may God strike me dead, right? If I'm not telling the truth. You know, lightning come down, poof, and just kind of dust me, right? We do that. And then I was in court, not because it had to be, but, you know, I had to be because they called me to be on a jury thing. But, you know, when you get in court, what do they do? They, they say, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not the truth, so help you God, right? And so there's this moment when they are trying in our society to get us. Okay, so uh, let's look at the consequences of, of uh, swearing, right? So what are actually the consequences of swearing? The Bible says, do not swear, otherwise you will be condemned. Wow. That's James 5, 12. Now, when James started this whole thing, he says, above all else, pay attention to this. Now, when you see that phrase, above all else in Scripture, it's like a red flag. It's saying, hey, 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 you've been reading along here for a little while. You've been listening. This is important. Underline this one. Get this one straight. OK, so James says, above all else, don't swear. Don't try to back up the truth with something that is going to try to reinforce the truth. Why? He says uh, it's important to understand that 
This swearing, lying, right? Um, it says, if you lie, you're going to be condemned. So in John 8, 44, it says this. You, you belong to your father. Now, Jesus is talking to some people who were really, really mean people. And uh, they were, you know, spinning out some stuff. And Jesus says, you guys, your father's the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. What this says is that Satan, his natural language is lying. He was actually the creator of the first lie, right? He's basically saying, you know, you know what? I'm going to be greater than God. That's a lie. It's impossible. I'm going to ascend to the throne of God. That's a lie. He can't do that. He won't be able to do that. And then what does he do? He goes down to earth and he, and he tells a lie to Eve. Oh, God didn't say that you would, you'd be harmed at all if you ate from that tree that he's told you not to eat from. Don't worry about it. He just doesn't want, want you to have what he has, right? So Satan is the liar. That's what the Bible says. Now, so if we understand that he is a liar... And Jesus turns to these people who are mean-spirited people who are living about one thing and doing another. They're trying to teach people, you know, be obedient, be obedient when they're not. So by their lifestyle, they're actually lying to the people. Jesus says, you, you, you're just like your father. You are just like Satan. So the implication is when we don't tell the truth, when we lie, we are being like Satan. Okay? Now, um, some... 5 verse 6, David says this. He says, you know what, guys? You destroy, you, talking to God, you destroy those who tell lies. So there is a serious thing going on here. Lying is not just like, oh, hey, just a little white lie. Don't worry about it. God takes it serious. Matter of fact, if you go to Revelation chapter 21, wow, buckle your seatbelts. Here it comes. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, arts, the uh, idolaters, all liars. Isn't it interesting? Liars get lumped together with all those other really, really, really what we would consider bad things. So it's a big deal. He says, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur this is the second death. Now, there's a lot of theologians that debate what is this second death thing. Uh, it can't be good. Let's say it that way. All right? I mean, if Jesus is saying, look, you know, burning, sulfur, fire, they're going to be cast into this lake of fire forever and ever. Whoo! Uh, and liars get thrown down there? This is serious stuff. So God is really trying to get our attention here. Now, on the other hand, if Satan is the father of lies... Jesus is just the opposite. Jesus said, I am the way, the what? The truth and the life. So on one hand, you've got Satan who's a liar, and the other hand, you've got Jesus who's a truth teller. Polar opposites, right? And when we commit our life to Christ and we say, okay, thank you that you forgive me of my sin, I want to become more like Jesus, that means you want to become more of a truth teller like Jesus, not a liar like Satan. Now, um, we have to also understand that uh, another consequence of lying is that if you've ever lied, you understand this concept, lying breaks trust, right? When you are told a lie and you find out it is a lie, what happens? Well, you, you don't listen to that person believing them very easily until they have to kind of recoup things, right? Uh, maybe you've been the one who w was the liar and you were found out and suddenly, you know, people don't trust you anymore. And that's the need for all of this, you know, reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. Our society has degraded to the point that we need to swear in hope that someone will believe us because we are such good liars all the time. Okay? Now, so that brings us to a point to ask a question. Um, how do we stop lying? I mean, in our natural state, we're going to try to cover our tail. We're going to try and do all kinds of things. But, you know, how do we stop this, this thing of, of lying all the time to each other? Well, um, I'll ask you a question. Why do we lie? I think that's where we have to start, right? If we can figure out why we lie, maybe it'll help us stop. So, tell me, why do we lie? Anybody? What's that? Avoiding getting in trouble. In other words, you've done something that's wrong, right? And so you tell a little, fabricate a little lie so you don't get in trouble for it, okay? What else? 
to protect somebody else's feeling. Now that's, you know, has a good intent, right? I don't want to hurt their feelings, you know. And so I'm not going to tell them the truth to harm them, right? Okay? Somebody else? Too You're too embarrassed. Again, maybe you did something that, you know, if somebody found out, you go, oh, you know, they're not going to like me. They're not going to look at me the same way anymore, right? They're going to think I'm a fool. Okay? Others? Fear of rejection. Okay? The first word there is the most important, right? Fear. Now, if you go back to that Revelation passage, the first word that he mentions in terms of those who are cast in the lake of fire, the cowardly. Isn't it interesting that all those bad things are bracketed by the cowardly and liars? Don't they go together? I mean, most lies that we tell, have to, they're fear-based. They're fear-based lies. We don't you know, want someone to think badly of us or to think less of us or whatever, right? I mean, there's a fear factor there, and that's why we tell the lie. Now, there's other reasons that we tell lies. Anybody else got, got a good one? Trying to make ourselves look better, which is a lie, right? We're presenting ourselves as maybe something that we aren't because we want someone to think. Guys are really, really good at this, fabricating stories about, you know, exploits that they've done, you know. And uh, as long as that people don't really know them, it works, okay, sometimes. Okay, anybody else? Okay, you hit a lot of them, okay? To avoid punishment, all those kinds of things. We, we lie for all kinds of different reasons. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I tried to be a good liar when I was a kid, all right? My favorite lie was, oh, mom, my watch stopped, right? That was back in the day when you had to wind watches to make them run, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, see me later, all right? Now they have a thing called batteries that make them run, right, without winding. But, oh, yeah, that was my big deal. I, you know, I'd turn my walk, watch back, and I'd go, oh, mom, I forgot to wind my watch, you know? And she'd go, like, yeah, right, okay? But what was, what, what was the punishment? Did she say, oh, you are so smart? No. I always got in trouble. Anytime I got found out, I got in trouble. So the consequence of lying is always punishment. And so... That's the first thing that we have to do is consider why do we lie and then consider the punishment that comes along with it. But the second uh, idea of how to correct this idea of lying is to actually consider the benefits of telling the truth. Now, what is the, big, the biggest benefit of telling the truth? Well, um, first of all, it removes fear, right? Uh, it removes fear. Um, it says here in Zephaniah 3, 13, that's a book you don't read very often, right? The remnant of Israel will do no wrong. They will speak no lies. No deceit will be found in their mouth. They will eat and lie down, and no one will make them afraid. You know, there's just something about telling the truth. When the truth is out there, finally, you can rest easy. I mean, you, you, you take your lumps or whatever, but if the truth is out there and you're living the truth, you're not always walking around like, oh man, if somebody finds out, I'm going to be in big trouble, right? I mean, we've all been there, right? We've all you know, been on the other end of telling that lie, and then all of a sudden we're, we start becoming afraid. Oh man, if they find out, I'm in big trouble. And so we either compound the lie the next time, or we try and come up with an excuse, we avoid the person, but that fear when we're telling the truth, is removed. What do we have to fear if we tell the truth, right? Now, there can be some consequences if we tell the truth. We'll talk about, more about that in just a second. We can't avoid the consequences of the truth. But um, if we're truth tellers, the interesting thing is that we can lie down and not be afraid. Not be afraid. And then another one, I love it, in Psalm 34, verse 13, it says this, Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. If you told the lie, a lie to the wrong person, you'd get killed, okay? Um, back in the day, you know, if you lied to your boss, you lied to your master, you know, if you're a slave or something like that, they could lop off your head, right? And so that it has to do with longevity, with life, and not just with life on earth, but the, the eternal life, right? Because liars wind up in the lake of fire. Wow, okay. So James is trying to get a message into our head. If you are a follower of Christ, you've got to live a life of truth. So we consider why we lie. We consider the benefits of telling the truth. But then um, where do we go from there? Well, James 
it makes it pretty simple. He says, here's the deal, folks. It's as simple as just letting your yes be yes and your no be no. Okay? Don't embellish. Don't try to reinforce. You should be the kind of person that when you say, this is what I'm going to do, you don't have to swear that you're going to do that. They just know you are going to follow through, right? And one of the favorite things these days is, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there. And then we get another option and we don't show up and we, oh, well, something came up, right? Well, you made a promise and you broke the promise. See, that's lying. That's lying. And so how do we do this? Well, we have to let our yes be yes and our no be no. Now, James is actually quoting Jesus from Matthew chapter 5, 33 through 37. And Jesus says, you know, you've heard that it was said to the people a long time ago, don't break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. But I'm telling you right now, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And don't swear by your head, for you cannot even make even one hair white or black. That was the before Grecian formula, okay? But uh, he says, he says um, simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. And then Jesus adds this to the end. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Just simply tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth and it's going to be good for you. Now that may be overly simplistic, um, but I think there are a couple other things that can help us to reinforce our truth telling. If you understand that you have a, a problem, because sometimes we're self-deceived, right? We're telling something and then we, you know, don't even realize because we've done it so many times that we're lying. Okay? One of the, the real passive kind of lies that goes on, because we, no one thought about this when, when we asked, why do we lie? You know, the inconvenience thing. Someone calls, right? Oh, hi, can I talk to so-and-so? And it's like they're standing right there. And they're going like, no, I'm not here. I'm not here, right? And we say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, he can't come to the phone right now. You know, he's in Africa. You know, it's whatever you, you know, tell him, right? Because you don't want to have to talk to them right then and there. You don't want to have to say, you know what, I'm sorry, um, I just don't want to talk to you. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, goodbye. Um, you know, that's the good thing about new phones is they got the, you know, person's name on it, you know, and you go, oh, I'm not home, Ain't. just turn it off, right? But I think here's a couple of ideas that we can do, we can use to help us not lie. Number one, okay, if you are aware at all of anything that you've done, lying is a sin, right? 1 John 1, 8 says, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth isn't in us. So when we you know, live in a way that is not pleasing to God, or we're doing something that we know is sin, and we're pretending like it's not, that's a lie. It's a lie. So God says, confess that. Just confess it. Now, one of the ways that you can do this is you can have a group of people that you can invest yourself in and say, you know what, I need you to help me be a truthful person, okay? And that's the power of a small group scenario or a, or a friendship. I had a good friend in high school that we did this to each other. We said, you know, hey, man, if I start telling, telling you know, lies, just slug me. Tell me, you know, help me to tell the truth. I had a really bruised arm for a long time with that, you know, invitation from my friend. But just to confess any sin when, it's, when you understand that it's there. Now, understand, too, that you may be self-deceived and you don't even know you're doing something. So if a friend can't help you, who can? Well, the Holy Spirit can, right? I mean, here we go to God and we just ask him through his spirit to reveal anything that we might be lying about that we're unaware of, okay? John 16, 13 says this, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. When you ask God to help you, God, just help me be a truthful person. Reveal to me any area that I'm self-deceived, that I, I'm acting like it's, I'm truthful or, or, and, and I'm really not. Just point that out to me. And you know what? The Holy Spirit will do that. And I, one person talked to me after the first service and just said, you know what? Uh, before I became a Christian, I, I was a pathological liar. And it's just kind of part of my nature. You know, I just lied. I didn't even know I was, li I was lying. It's just part of who I was. So it's a really big deal to understand and he equated it to alcoholism. You know, this whole idea, I'm, I'm addicted to lying. It's, it's something that's always going to be with all of us. You know that? We are always going to be tempted 
when we get into those certain situations to, to not tell the truth. And there's another way that we, we lie, and that is just telling partial truths to get out of something, right? And that's another way of lying, is not telling the whole truth, right? And so we need to ask God's Spirit to enlighten us, to show us where we are in the wrong on this case, okay? And then third thing is that when you do speak the truth, be loving and kind, okay? Speaking the truth in love, the Bible says, Ephesians 4, 15, uh, we will see, we will grow in all things uh, up into him who is the head, that is Christ. In other words, when you start telling the truth and you do it in a loving way, you become more like Jesus, okay? I mean, Jesus is not ever going to like, you know, get real mean and in your face about the truth. He wants, he wants to heal you. He wants you to be, be well, okay, and, and have a good life and prosper. Now, Janice and I lived in the Midwest for 10 years, and uh, we lived close to this little town called Hutchison, Kansas. Now, what you see is a picture of a, 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 a salt mine. In Hutchison, Kansas, they have the largest underground salt mine in the world, okay? It is over a mile long under the ground. And you can, take, uh, you can take tours of this place. It's really kind of amazing. I never went down there because I didn't want to be underground that long, okay? But, uh, but it, it's a salt factory that's owned by um, the Morton Salt Company, okay? And you can, you can even go over there today and take a tour if you want to, okay? But sodium, salt, right? Sodium, salt is an interesting thing. Um, it's an extremely active element. It's found naturally only in a combined form, Okay? Now, salt is what? Sodium and what else? Chloride. chloride, okay? All you chemists here, okay? So you got sodium chloride. Now, sodium, like I said, in its natural state is never by itself. Interesting. Chlorine, though, chloride can be by itself. And what is that? Chlorine, what does that do to you? It can kill you. It's a gas, right? It's caustic. If you, you know, hey, let's inhale some chlorine, dude. I mean, you would die, all right? Now, salt is kind of like love, right? That telling the truth biblically means that there always has to be love combined with the truth. If love isn't present, it can be very caustic, right? I mean, the truth by itself, you know, um, it can really, really harm people. Like someone said, you know, I don't want to, you know, tell somebody the truth because it might hurt them, Right? So we have to figure out a way as people, as, as Jesus followers, to be people of the truth, but also always, always mesh that with love, okay? Be a loving person. Jesus said that, you know, when we are uh, true followers of him and we get out into the world, he calls us salt. You're the salt of the earth. And so we have to combine love with the truth that we tell people in a way that, that helps them to be able to embrace the truth. And that's really the beauty of being, you know, a follower of Jesus is you can ask the Holy Spirit, hey, help me be a truthful person. But while I'm being truthful, help me to be loving. And I think there's a lot of people who have turned the church off and turned turn God off because they're very caustic. Right. You're going to hell. Right. Well, it might be a truth statement, but it wasn't said very nicely. Right. There are a lot of people who are living their life without God. And they need Jesus. Desperately, they need Jesus in their life to forgive them of sin and to help heal them from all kinds of things. But we're not going to get a hearing if we're mean-spirited, right? So we have to be loving and kind and gentle and forgiving, gracious, full of mercy and truth, okay? So James says, this is a heads up. This is important. Telling the truth, being a truth teller, one who says yes and means it or no and means it with no embellishment is how we, how we go, right? That, that's how we go as Christians. All right, hey, let's pray. God, thank you that uh, you give us uh, instruction in the scripture in how to be truthful. Just simply let our yes be yes and our no be no and uh, call it a day. It's good, God, that we were uh, loved by you and we're thankful that you give us a chance to have the Holy Spirit in our life that can inform us when we're in the wrong or when we're not completely truthful even with ourselves. So help us be people that are truth-filled and full of love at the same time. In Jesus' name, amen.